Comedy Time presents Comedy Brew, a delicious mix of short, fast, funny, featuring today's most hilarious comedian. So crank up the volume and switch off the light, and get ready to enjoy the sweet, fresh taste of comic goodness. Hi. If you want to laugh every second, watch Comedy Time. <laughs> and if you want to laugh even more, watch Natalie. <laughs> <laughs> and if you want a conniption, watch this next clip. <laughs> Because we don't care, right? We're America. We don't care about you. We probably can't name five other world leaders out of all of us in this room. Because we're America. We don't care. We're like a really boring hot chick that won't quit talking about herself, you know? Just sit around, look how beautiful I am. We're the greatest. All right. We do that all the time. We're great, but we do that all the time. We're the greatest. We're the greatest. Most of us haven't been anywhere else. So we're just taking our own damn word for it on that. All right? Maybe we are the greatest, and maybe we're like Muhammad Ali, and once we were the greatest, and now we just think we're the greatest. What? <laughs> uh, now, is that moaning for Muhammad or your country? I don't know which one. one. Should be a little bit of both. Just saying. Just, uh, we're number one. Really? Look at the stats again. Okay. Look at education and healthcare and soccer. You know, I mean, we're not that great. <laughs> I like it. Mm -hmm. Got a black present now. Now, anytime my black friends use that thing I've heard my whole life about how the man has been keeping them down, huh? Turns out it's not the man been keeping you down. It's the you. It's this Xbox we've been playing for the last two and a half years. It's the man in the mirror. And he's not just black, right? He's half black, he's half white, he's like a mixed breed hybrid. He's not just good for the country, he's good for the damn environment, I think. We got a president that gets good gas mileage for a change. And that hybrid, that is the future, man. Everybody that's the best is a damn hybrid, right? Like Tiger Woods and Holly Berry and Derek Jeter. If you're one or the other, you're getting left behind from here on out, you know what I mean? So let's go, you, black women, you need to start nailing more white guys, you know? Everybody, right? And white girls, you just keep doing what you've been doing with the black guys. <laughs> <Please. laughs> That is working out good. Hey, what's up? I'm LJ and you're watching Comedy Time. Now this next comic serves up some great jokes. I just wish they came with a side of bacon. That'd be awesome. This is embarrassing. I went to Burger King last night uh, and it was the drive-thru, which is even worse. Don't you feel guilty when you go to the drive-thru? You know it, because I, I was driving home and I was like, God, I know I shouldn't be there in the first place, and I know it's bad for me, but I just keep going back. It's like I'm being booty called by a sandwich. <laughs> I thought about this, all the signs are there, okay? It's late. I don't want to tell anybody about it. I get home, I try and hide the evidence. And then I wake up, I feel disgusting. <laughs> and you know, Burger King never makes the first move. <laughs> Ever. They give me this attitude, they're like, Psh, you know you want us. And I'm like, Psh, I know. And sometimes I'll wake up in the morning and completely forget that I went to Burger King the night before. It's like a grease-induced blackout, right? No recollection, and I'll feel fine, and I'll forget, and I'll move about my day, and I'll get, take a shower, I'll put my clothes on, open the front door, take a breath of fresh air, then I'll open my car door, and the entire thing will smell like a bacon double whopper. And I'm like, are those my panties? <laughs> Just an FYI, I'm on MySpace. I would love to be your MySpace friends. Uh, my profile says I'm straight because I am. When did everybody get so confused about their sexual orientation? Why is it so confusing? Like, for example, bisexual. I don't even think that thing exists. 
I don't. I think you are either gay or straight or drunk. <laughs> Thank you very much. Hi, I'm Rob F. Martinez, and you're probably wondering what you're gonna do on your next date night. You could go to the movies or a restaurant, but if you really want to show them that they're the bee's knees, why don't you curl up in front of a nice warm laptop and enjoy your next comedian on Comedy Time? Just remember to delete the bookmarks because you don't want them finding <laughs> some of your other stuff. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about, right? <laughs> delete it. Just delete it now. Uh, I wanted to be a rock star. I'm going to be honest with you guys. I decided to go into stand-up and I love my job, but I wanted to be a rock star because rock stars are what attract women because there's just so much sex appeal to the musician and he's up there and he's jamming and he's, he's playing his guitar and the sweat and it's dripping down. It's just so appealing, right? The drummer and all the energy. I just wonder, do Hispanic women, when they're watching like the mariachi polka band, do they look at the guy with the accordion and are they like, oh my God, look at the way he's pumping that thing. Hot bag of air, oh my God. Is it the same? Like, boom, 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 boom. So when I say I, you guys are awesome. So when I say I wanted to be a rock star, what I really wanted to be was a, a rapper. That's what I. That's what I was. I was a rapper. And my rap name was Paco. Yeah, I thought it was an intimidating sort of gangster-sounding name, but that's because I'm from Lexington, Kentucky. I moved out to California. I realized that Paco is not an intimidating rap name. Paco is like somebody you pick up at Home Depot. Paco can lace some drywall. That's all I'm saying. That's what he is. <laughs> I love Latin people though because they have a great sense of humor. It's important when you're in Los Angeles, it, like this is what I do, I listen to the Mexican radio stations like Que Buena and La Raza. Those are the best. Those are the best. <laughs> because they teach you Spanish and you need to learn Spanish. It's a very important language to know here in Southern California or as I like to call it, Northern Mexico. <laughs> I took Spanish for five years while I was in high school. I was a little slow. Uh, anybody else in here uh, take Spanish when you were in high school or college? Yeah, a couple, can you speak Spanish now? Of course not. I took Spanish for five years while I was in high school. You know what I learned from that? I learned that Lima is the capital of Peru. Yeah, that's gonna help me a whole lot when I'm lost in Pacuema. <laughs> donde esta, donde esta, my rims and car stereo. So here's a quick impression I'm gonna do for you guys. This is my impression of what every ad sounds like on Mexican radio if you don't really speak the language. My impression, every ad, que buena la raza. Buenos dias, señores. Verizon wireless free a minute. date a Mexican girl, she used to tell me, she was like, I think you have jungle fever. I was like, baby, you're Mexican. That's like landscaping fever. I'm very proud of you right now because I know that you're slacking and that's what I would do right now too if I were you. You're watching Comedy Time. Let's check out some more clips. Hi, everybody. You guys are having fun? Well, I'm from Istanbul and don't worry, recently I became an American citizen, so you are safe. It was so cool after I was sworn in, the judge said, well, welcome to America, what are you gonna do now? I'm like, I'm gonna be the next governor of California. Huh? Do you understand everything I say? Am I clear? Oh, thank you. I'm always working on my English and I'm still making mistakes. It pisses me big time off. I'm getting. And you know what, if you live in America, I believe you should learn how to speak English, right? Yes. Thank you. Otherwise, I also have to learn how to speak Spanish. That's tough, that's tough. My parents didn't come with me, they stayed in back home and uh, they're both medical doctors. Uh, not a big deal to be a doctor in Turkey. If you have a flute and a cobra, you are in. Very simple. They were so strict, that's why I came here, to escape from them. They would not let me sleep with my husband till I was 11. 
Sick. And I believe they loved my brother way more than me. Because every Friday I ask my dad, may I please go to the movies with my friends? He's like, no, it's your turn to wax your brother. My brother is like big foot. There goes the whole weekend. I got to... It's not cool, not cool. Well, uh, now I'm living the American dream. Finally, my whole family is thousands of miles away. <laughs> Best thing ever, isn't it? But don't misunderstand me. I love my family. I am there for them every holiday, every birthday, every assassination. I am back home, <laughs> back home. I don't miss anybody, really. <laughs> I love everybody here, why would I go back, right? But I miss my little niece. If you see her, you'd love her. She's so cute, she's six years old. So time to time, I go to Kmart just to look at the shoes she made. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> I, live, I live in LA and I fit right in, like freeway shootings. <laughs> it reminds me of the holidays back home. <laughs> I'm like, oh, so cool partying. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> dating is so much fun here. When you're dating a Middle Eastern man, if you did, you know what I'm talking about. You always hear the same lines. He's like, look at you. You look gorgeous. You look beautiful. Get in my cab. <laughs> you did, huh? <laughs> This is Shang, this is comedy time. If you look at the logo, the dude is hanging from there, that, that's me in about two years if my career don't pop. Y'all do things out here that people don't do in other states. I don't know if y'all knew this. Y'all do something called hiking. <laughs> what is the point of this? Somebody's like, Nate, man, you wanna go on a hike? What are we gonna do? We're gonna walk up. Well, well, where are we gonna walk to? Nowhere. <laughs> what are we gonna do when we get there? We're gonna turn around, come back down. That's what we gonna do. <laughs> Sound like a fun time? I got a PlayStation, dog. I don't need to do all that. Uh-uh. I, uh, <laughs> I've also noticed that, woo, the LA, anybody been on the LA bus system? Just the corners. Y'all showed up late, didn't y'all, uh-huh? I know y'all been on the LA bus system. I actually got on the LA bus system and there were four other black albinos on the bus. <laughs> Come on, now, my first thought is, I kinda wanted to be the only weird dude on the bus today and y'all are including on my time. But then I started looking around and everybody who wasn't a black albino on the bus was looking at us like we were some new form of terrorist. <laughs> like they're, they're looking at each other like, And so I ding the, you know, I ding the bell, I'm getting off the bus, and just so happened that we all four got off the bus at the same time. <laughs> I felt compelled to just turn around, I, hey, 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 we're not gonna blow nothing up, dog. Just... They didn't believe me because the other three guys were like, well, we are, I don't know about you. <laughs> Building over there, we are gonna blow that up. Um... Being a black albino though, I am a, I'm also legally blind. I have horrible vision. My vision's like really bad. I'd, I'd wear my glasses on stage, but I don't want the people in the front row to pass out, so. Uh, put those on hold. Um, I do have a driver's license, though. Um, oh, wow, have you seen the people drive in LA? It don't matter. <laughs> on your cell phone, with a dog in your lap, flicking butts out the window, eating a cheeseburger? Tell me that I can't drive because I wear glasses? No, 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 absolutely not. Shoot, out here crazy. One of my friends was like, man, you should get a windshield, that's your prescription. <laughs> and you know what's that? I did think about it too, I thought about it. Cause I was like, I would love to mess with people. I would love people to be like, hey man, we're going to the store? Yeah, man, let me get in your car. Oh my God, oh my God. 
Oh my God, why can I see the beach right now? We're in Fresno, why can I see the beach? What's up, my name's Lara Chingoti and I had a guy come at me. He was like, hey, you want some of this? Now that we're touching ourselves to punctuate? No, <laughs> no I don't. If I need to grab it twice to underline and highlight it, I just did. I remember now, I was militant in my fatness. There were stores that irritated me. Five, seven, nine. Y'all remember these shops, five, seven, nine, just for them three little old sizes. And if you weren't a five, seven, nine, they didn't want you in them stores. I went in, every one of them I could find, chomping on Butterfingers. Lady tried to block my entrance one time, talking about, hi, <laughs> this is a 579 chop. You looking for a gift? <laughs> I know, I was like, no. She goes, what are you, about a size 18? I said, yeah, I am. Give me two nines, I'll piece them together. <laughs> and then I went in, I did. I went on in there and started shopping around. She made me mad. I went and found me the smallest pair of pants I could. Went and tried them on, made sure I busted out the seams. And then I took them back to her. You know, I guess you were right. <laughs> Man, yes. I bought my first G-string when I was 275 pounds. I know I wasn't even down to a G. I was hovering around LMNOP. But Victoria's Secrets was having a sale. And I took my Bertha butt in there, knocking over them rails, you know, cause why they gotta put clothes so close together? Chomp, chomp. I did, I went shopping, I found me one of them little old G-strings in the back. It was so cute, it had fluff and pretty, just pretty. I went up there and I snatched it up, took it up, and went up to pay for it. And I knew it was a little tiny thing cause the lady put it in an envelope. <laughs> Told me, good luck. I came home and I had to try to get into it. You know how we women are. We buy a new outfit, you know, one of them that lay away that we gonna get in when we lose 70, 80, 90 pounds. <laughs> but I had to get into it that day. So you know how we women are. We bring a new outfit home, we try to get into it, and I had to lock all the doors and let the shades down. And then I got in that position that we women get in when we're trying on something new, like our skinny jeans. <laughs> I laid on the floor. Buck naked, cause everything fall for the right. You get your flat stomach that way, everything oozes. And I started rolling this G-string on, right? And I knew it was gonna be tough, cause it was tight at the ankles. <laughs> Rubber band tight. You know like when the cops have a riot and they run out of handcuffs, start using them twisty ties on people? It looked like that down there. But I was delirious. You make up lies why something won't fit. And in my mind, I couldn't get that G-string up because my legs was dry and ashy. <laughs> now, for y'all folk who don't know, that's when black folks is so crackly down there that we can take our finger and write on us like Black Ford Jungle. Yeah, I can write a letter and mail it, that kind of, yeah. So I couldn't get this G-string up or down, and I'm like, I, 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 I need something. So I got up and I hopped to the kitchen, and there on the counter was a tub of butter flavor Crisco. <laughs> And I was like, whoa, yeah, let me slick that on there real good. <laughs> I was moisturizing. <laughs> and then I hopped back to the living room and I lay back on the carpet and uh, I hadn't ran the vacuum in like two months. <laughs> and I got that cat. I had fur balls the size of tumbleweeds running up in there. But I didn't let that stop me. I was pulling on this G-string and I was flicking them fur balls off me like that. Turned it to an aerobics class. <laughs> Took me an hour and a half to get that G-string up. But I did it, yes I did. Mm -hmm. I did. 275 pounds, little old G-string. I stood in the mirror and I was like, whoo, I'm too sexy for myself. <laughs> and then I exhaled and it shot off. <laughs> What's up? You're watching Comedy Time. Sometimes great comedians come out of nowhere. Seriously, we found this next guy off the street. Hope he's funny. I didn't go to church growing up. I grew up in Tennessee. And uh, 
We went to church. I actually tried to, it's funny, I tried to play basketball for my high school team, but I got cut. So I had to play for my church because the church cannot cut you. They have to let you play. <laughs> they could cut you. You'd be pretty bad if they're like, look, we think you're good, but Jesus does not think you're that good. <laughs> He is our captain, so. <laughs> Church ball was a lot different, because we played, it was, uh, we played half court, no three-point line. We played on carpet, that's your first sign. It's not gonna count. And they didn't give us a basketball. We didn't have a basketball. We would just stand there and play on honesty. <laughs> You'd be like, I just made it. It was like, oh, that's a good shot. You're really good. <laughs> I stole it. I forgive you for stealing it. It was, it was moral points. It counts later. Are y'all gonna go watch the Nathan's hot dog eating contest? Did everybody get their tickets for that? It's exciting. I think it's free anyway, but. I remember the first time I saw the hot dog eating contest. The first time I saw it, you would see a lot of skinny people and then they would show like a huge fat guy so I was like, all right, you know, obviously he is gonna win. He probably ate on the way here. <laughs> but he does not win. Kobayashi or Joey Chestnut, two very in-shape guys. So that means fat people are not even good at what they're good at. <laughs> Who would've thought? Huh? Who would've? I'm married and that is uh, whatever, but you do it. <laughs> You know what marriage is like? Marriage is like, you ever go to a concert and you see a mosh pit and you're like, you know what, I'm gonna go get in that mosh pit. But then once you get in it, you're like, Poof, I do not want to be in this mosh pit. <laughs> At all. I am gonna leave and go get some beer. Then the mosh pit's like, hey, you drank last night. You're like, all right, mosh pit, why don't you get off my back and let me live my life.